Okay, we're going to practice determining whether an equation is balanced or unbalanced. <clears throat> so when we're doing this, let's do the first step, and let's just go ahead and underline the whole thing. And then where you find the yield sign, let's draw a vertical line going down. And the reason we do this is just so it's nice and neat and easy to kind of look at. Okay, so the next step. Let's go ahead and figure out what elements are in this equation. And I see that we have magnesium. So I'm going to put magnesium over here. And give yourself a lot of room and take your time and you'd be nice and neat and it'll be a lot easier to do and you'll probably have more success that way. And then we have magnesium here and we have oxygen. And then over here also we have magnesium. We have oxygen. I'm going to make a little equal sign. And don't hesitate to write all over this thing if you need to. So let's focus on the reactant side. This is the reactant side. Separated by the yield sign, we have the product side. It's the product side. Okay, so we have magnesium, and I have a notice that I have a coefficient of two. That means there are two magnesium molecules. Two magnesium molecules. This two coefficient applies only to magnesium. And remember, this two is called the coefficient. It applies only to magnesium. It does not go past the plus sign, and it would never go past the yield sign either. So, since I have a coefficient of 2, this 2 applies only to magnesium. That coefficient applies only to magnesium. And I know that I have two magnesiums. Okay, we're done with the magnesium on this. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has a subscript. Again, that's a subscript of 2. Remember, subscript is a little number to the right of a, an element name, chemical symbol, and what you do is you multiply the subscript by however many there are of this. In this case, there's one oxygen. Okay, there's one oxygen. There's, what I mean is there's a one coefficient. It's just invisible. So really, in the end, you multiply the subscript by that invisible one, and you have a total of two oxygens. I'll say that again. Since the subscript is two, you would multiply it by the Coefficient. Well, there is no coefficient in this case, and you can say that's the same as an invisible one. So you multiply that 2 by the invisible one coefficient, and you get 2. Again, that's called a subscript. If there were other elements right here, the subscript would not apply to them. The subscript only applies to the element right in front of it. I'll say that again. The subscript only applies to the element right in front of it. Okay, so we have two magnesiums and two oxygens on the reactant side. So let's look at the product side. Separated by the yield side, over here we have the product side. And remember the reactants are the materials that you start with and that react together. And the product, or product in this case, would be the, the material that you end with, that is produced. It's a new substance with new and different physical and chemical properties. And just remember, this would probably be a good time to remind ourselves that the law of conservation of mass is the whole reason we're doing this because remember the law of conservation of mass says that you can neither gain nor destroy mass during a chemical reaction. So we want to check do we have the same amount of atoms, and do we have the same type of atoms? We know we have the same type, so we're checking them out right now to see if this follows the law of conservation of mass. So, my magnesium. Once again, I have a coefficient of 2. Again, that's a coefficient of 2, and it applies to the entire formula. So I'm going to make this 2 multiply, kind of like in math, you did the uh, distributive property. 2 will carry through all the way. So it applies to magnesium. And you have two magnesiums. And you have the two carry over to the oxygen. And you have two oxygens. So in this case, the 
formula, the chemical equation is balanced. You have two magnesiums here on the reactant, two on the product. Two oxygens on the reactant, two oxygen on the product. All the atoms are equal and they are the same type, meaning when this reaction took place, we had the same type and number of atoms to start with is the, the same number that we started with that we ended with. Okay, so this would be a balanced chemical equation. This is balanced, so we'll... Balanced. All right, let's try one more. Again, we'll set it up to make it nice and neat. And we are first just setting it up. So we're going to look over here. I have calcium. I have hydrogen. And I have oxygen. And over here, I have, once again, I have calcium. I have hydrogen on the product side. And I also have oxygen on the product side. So, so far, we do have the same types of atoms. So we know that there's nothing crazy going on. The same type, there are the same kind of types of atoms here. Okay, so let's just start taking it step by step and let's start with the reactant side. To the left of the yield sign, let's start with the reactants. Well, this is easy. Calcium's by itself. That means I just have one calcium because there's no subscript, there's no coefficient. That makes it easy. Okay, hydrogen, H2O. Well, we have the subscript of two. That little two is called a subscript, and it applies to hydrogen. So I'm going to have two hydrogens. The, remember, the little subscript only applies only applies to what's inside. Sorry, to what's right to the left of it. Okay, moving on. Let's do oxygen. Oxygen is once again by itself. It has no subscript and it has no coefficient over here. So oxygen would also be one. All right. So on the reactive side, we have one calcium, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. Let's look at the product side. We have one calcium. And let's remember, this subscript doesn't apply to that calcium. The subscript over here does not apply to this calcium. The subscript would only apply to what's in the parentheses right before it. So this calcium is all by itself in that sense. So we have one calcium. Okay, so far so good. One calcium on the reactant, one calcium on the product. Hydrogen. Okay, well, there's a subscript here. And remember earlier we said if there's a subscript and it has parentheses in front of it, everything in those parentheses is affected by that subscript. So you have a subscript of two. So I have two hydrogens. So far, so good. But we have to remember, look over here. We have H2 over here by itself. So we've got this hydrogen, this, sorry, these two hydrogens and these two hydrogens. Because of this subscript, we have to keep in mind, add that little two over here. And so you've got a total of four hydrogens. You've got the two here and the two here. And just remember, that little subscript, it only affects this H all by itself because there's a plus sign to stop it. But this subscript affects everything in front of it that's in the parentheses. Almost done. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen, well, it's in the parentheses, and so it's affected by this subscript of two. So we will have two oxygens. Well, let's see if this is balanced. Calciums is good. Calciums are good. One and one. Hydrogen, two. Over here, uh-oh, hydrogen is four. We already know it's not balanced. Let's just keep looking, though. Z uh, oxygens would be one oxygen. Oxygen over here, we have two. It's unbalanced. This is not a balanced equation. So you would know this would never happen in real life. Okay. And so on quizzes and tests, you'll be asked to identify whether equations are balanced and unbalanced. This would be an example of an unbalanced chemical equation. And so hopefully this is helpful.